Um, hi everyone, my name is Tobias and I'm from a Danish uh, company called TwoMind, based here in Copenhagen. Uh, we're going to talk to you today a bit about the uh, knob commerce, which is the right uh, way to say it, uh, for those who aren't noobs, and uh, how we have been trying to interface knob commerce with Composite, because in all honesty, I think we can all agree that one of the worst things that we often face is complexity. And complexity has a tendency to grow when you add more components, and uh, these components start having their own context, and then, oh my god, it really becomes a headache. So, if we can skip to the first slide. Uh, um, we were looking at how to solve this problem, and it, we quickly realized that we had sort of a multi-context challenge, both from a user perspective, but also from a technical perspective. Uh, one of the biggest challenges was that we had a client, uh, which is called Kulturnatten, who were very uh, happy about their uh, uh, past experiences with Composite, but they were looking to upgrade their 3.8 version to something more modern. And we told them, well, you can use C1, it's a great uh, app. And uh, they were like, yeah, but we need some shops also and all this. And uh, we said, well, we've got, on the other hand, new commerce, and we can probably mix it together somehow. And that was famous last words on my part. But nonetheless, contracts are binding, so once you start working, you have to finish your job. Which means that we had to come up with a way to try and mingle these two contexts together. And the first thing we did was we decided that, well, lo and behold, Something in Composite called an element provider. And the element provider has an interface that's called something like iHookless element provider, something like that, which provided us with a way to inline uh, the perspective or a new perspective for the new commerce dashboard, which Klaus, my colleague, will show you later. So that was at least one stone of our path towards the goal of making this thing work. The problem was, though, that Noob Commerce was running in its own context. So while you log in with your membership provider and you're an admin and you have access to all sorts of stuff in Composite, you get a big fat error in the perspective saying that you don't have access for anything. So you have to log in again, and that's obviously a nuisance is best. So we came up with this one-way synchronization feature to begin with that would allow us to push our admin logins from the C1 console into Noob Commerce, thus integrating the, the login processes. Um, the, the second thing then was that um, we had to work with this solution also from a webmaster perspective. One thing is that we can give you access to your dashboard. I mean, we could have given them a URL, they would have had, this, had the same thing. But the webmasters, they tend to work more on a page level. They're like, well, we need some functions and like, well, we can give you a few functions that will let you inline a shop page. There's great examples on Composite on how to do that with version 1.9, I think, 1.8. And that was where we actually started to begin with. But one of the problems was that, you know, it's, it's, it, it, granularity is also something that, that, that people want. So they're like, I can't live with having a full shop page here. I want only the basket there, and I want a category selector here, and I want to be able to search for pages there and go and so on and so on. So we ended up, you know, looking at it and said, well, fair enough. Uh, we can write some more functions. That's fairly simple. Uh, we thought at least, and then we started finding out that Newcomers, which uh, makes heavy use of uh, controls and such, uh, and um, later on MVC as well, uh, started acting up. So we basically ended up deciding that the only true road to really have you know, a package that works is to merge the two contexts together. And this is what we are working on today. I might as well say that what you're going to see is uh, an, a beta of some sort. It works for some clients when we hardwire together, but there are still quirks on the road that we have to solve in order to have what you would expect from a release package that people can just, you know, plug and play with. Uh, but that will, will come shortly, and hopefully uh, we will be able to offer everyone in the community uh, within the next three months or so uh, a package that they can download under, under some licensing, whatever. We haven't really thought about that, we think, mainly in code. But there will be a package available people can use, either to uh, integrate... Uh, features into Composite or, you know, use uh, or install Composite into existing uh, new commerce installations. So, 
Uh, if you'll excuse me a second, my computer started up. We had to uh, to look at how to approach this. Obviously, we've now I've talked a bit about the challenges, and our approach was fairly simple. Uh, to begin with, I decided that the best thing would be to sit down and look at how does uh, Composite want us to do this. So we uh, sat down and we looked at the manual, and uh, then I spent a few days to write an installer that does pretty much everything that is in that manual. Uh, and uh, that worked fairly well, kinda. It's uh, the whole, you know, build one, throw it away approach. So we learned a lot of things around, along the way of, you know, where does NotCommerce want it, it, its different artifacts? Uh, what is it that we need to do to make Composite, you know, work with this? Where do we register these functions? And so on and so on. And, uh, and, and after having done that and, and having tried that, we, we scrapped the project because, uh, all of a sudden, the, the NotCommerce guys, they decided to release version 2.0. And for some of you uh, who know NotCommerce, you'll know that they changed it into an MVC architecture. And that was both a blessing and a curse for us. It was a curse because a lot of the work that we'd done up until this point was more or less not compatible with the new way of interfacing the system. Uh, the, the, the blessing was that it made it more compatible with the way that we were working with Composite at the time, because we were making heavy use of MVC, especially for this culture and app. And um, on that note, I will let Klaus take a few minutes to explain to you what he's been doing with the, with the MVC integration to explain where we are today in terms of interfacing the two systems. So uh, first, I'll uh, show you uh, a package uh, or composite see it where I have the, uh, the package installed already. It takes about 10 minutes to install it, so mm. I'll let you uh, get away from that. Uh, but as I said, I have just installed the package and uh, it gives me this perspective in the bottom called the Noob Commerce. And within that, I have the same functionality as I would have in the dashboard in a, knob, uh, a, yeah, a single knob commerce system. And so here we have the administration for knob inside the C8 console, so we don't have a, a context switch, and you don't have to log into multiple systems and so on. Uh, Furthermore, I have just, uh, when you install the package, it comes empty. And uh, I, I took a decision called uh, uh, Nop has the possibility to both use SQL CE and a, really, uh, a real SQL database. But when installing the package, uh, we don't have the possibility to uh, give a connection string or something like that uh, when installing packages and see it. So I took the decision that when you install this package, you use the CA database, which just uh, lays in the app data folder. So you won't, uh, if you're using XML for your data, you won't uh, need to use an SQL database installed because it will just use the file. Uh, and yeah, you have to go through the administration yourself. I can just show you what I've done. I've just created my first category and a product within that. So if I navigate to the content perspective, I've just uh, created a new shop page which, which has the full layout. Inside that, uh, when install the package, we have some functions. At this point, we only have uh, two functions. We have a mini basket and a category page. And what I did here in the shop page is I've inserted the category page and given it the category ID. Maybe here we could do something with the pop-up dialog and chosen category, but not at this point. Uh, I've saved and published it. And I go to the side. And I have my product here. 
Uh, I can show you. Uh, our intention is uh, the checkout flow. We don't want the, every time you press the add to cart, it goes to the cart. And we thought that was pretty annoying that you have to go away from the product page every time. So um, with some JavaScript and uh, jQuery, we, we, I, oh, it's, it's still working process. Uh, I've done so all the buttons and links inside the knob. I'm actually taking them and uh, uh, doing some stuff with jQuery. So let's just uh, see a checkout flow. So here we have the shopping basket, uh, and we go to checkout. Uh, checkout as guest. That's a uh, configuration I've just have done before showing this. Uh, normally, you won't be able to check out as guest as a newly installed the knob. You would have to go inside the configuration and we have some order settings in here, which uh, allows anonymous checkout. So let's just whatever. This. No. Okay. Still working process, as I said. So that form is that not that you just Yeah. Uh, this form is actually uh, what we've done is that we uh, created an. and controller factory, or we extended the default controller factory for MVC, and we can take this and then we can inject it into Composite by modifying the HTML and give Composite the HTML that it needs. It doesn't need the entire templating system uh, which are available in Composite, so I just, it has some elements which is some wrapper of the content. I just take that and put it in the function, uh, returning that in the function. So I'll strip what's laying around. Uh, but let's see if it works this time. But in general, what it yields is a very modular approach because you can break certain UI elements from new commerce down into functions and insert them into the site. And that is essentially what you want because obviously none of us are interested in writing an entire checkout flow if you can just call it as a function and not commerce and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a little further here. Uh, of course, uh, most, in most cases you would have uh, some kind of uh, visa or integration for some kind of payment and that's still possible. Uh, the way it works in NOB is that the, you have some packages and you have some uh, payment packages, so you write your own payment provider. There are some available for uh, dips, quick pay, whatever. You can just go into that site, install it, and config configure it, and it, that will work too. But uh, for this uh, purpose, I'm just going to say install picker, cash and delivery, that's okay with me. And confirm my order. So now I've actually just created an order, and uh, yeah, it took like maybe 10 minutes installing the package, and then you just have to insert the functions in a couple of pages, and of course, uh, uh, type in all the categories and products and all of that. And you have access to the, the products, uh, the order information inside the, the UI and so on? Yes, yeah. if I go into sales now we, we, and orders. We should have some time for sales. Yeah. We, we can help you with that. 
<laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> so now here inside the administration, we have uh, the order I just created. And just if you were inside the knob uh, without composite, you are able to do uh, all the order management inside here. And also, it's a really good approach also because a lot of us are used to using knob to some extent. So rather than reinventing the admin interface, we actually just provide it in another context, which makes the it makes it easier for people that are used to knob to actually also adopt combo side because that's sort of sort of our one of our plans here is to go and say, well, you all have knob installations, isn't it great that you can make your own this and that? But when you do microsites, you have to go somewhere and hire a developer and so on. What if we gave you this package and you can do it yourself with this CMS system, which is very easy to use and so on? So it gives some, it, it gives different, you know, approaches to. And it also gives the, the possibility for existing knob commerce shops to migrating over to a combo side. Uh, actually, I have uh, a newly installed knob commerce I've just installed with the demo. Uh, you, you're able to install some demo data. So let's say that's my existing shop and I want to change uh, this newly side with only one category and one product to the existing. I would uh, all I have, would have to do is to change the connection string inside of the knob and it places a settings file inside the app data which only contains the connection string actually. Kill the process. Just to be sure it is killed. Well, And if I can go to my shop page, reload. Hopefully, I should see some books. And there we go. So now we have the existing, of course, you don't have this assign uh, and all of that. And you can do an X copy and take some of it with, but uh, going with the starter side, we're probably going to create an, a starter side for e-commerce solutions uh, when that's possible and uh, extend the functionality with the uh, more functions because we know that uh, those two isn't enough. But uh, that's uh, where we are at this point. That's, that's a pretty good start. Yeah. We also actually don't buy products. Soon. <laughs> 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 Let's see if we can hit that slide. Yeah. So we've also just made a small demonstration on how it actually works. If you wanted to integrate C1 into an existing solution. Take the microphone. Yeah. The, the, the first thing, obviously, is for us to download the latest release from CodePlex to our local machine. And uh, if you can, I need one of those clip thingies. Um, and then we create or we deploy the, the package onto whatever server we want to use to host uh, our app. Then we go and fetch a package. We have a plan that we would love to set up our own package server if we can figure out a way to mingle that in. Yeah, I know there's a package server packer thing, but I haven't looked at it, so that's why I'm smiling when I look at you, because I'm probably going to ask you this question again in a few weeks. So you fetch your own package, or the, the new package, and then step four is uh, you go and find the, what I've decided to call the new commerce plugin.things.txt file that you saw. Um, then you redirect it to whatever database you, you need and you more or less X copy your existing noob commerce directory into your uh, C1 directory and then next step you boot up the console which starts the composite process and you're up and running. So this is pretty much what it would take for you to extend a noob commerce installation with the CMS system and that can be done, I don't know, 
like cloud for 10, 15 minutes, depending on how fast you are. So we're, we're, we're aiming to make it to use and uh, easy to both from a, like a technical perspective, but also from an end user perspective. And uh, we would, you know, love uh, ideas and suggestions if people have, you know, something that they, they, they see that are missing. We would, we would love uh, comments and input uh, for that. Which leads us to our last slide, which is our Q&A session, if there's questions and such. No? directing through our uh, factory class. So I can take my controller and wrap that around. Yeah. Uh, and invoking the controller as if we're in its own context. Just stuff right now. Yeah. And if it's C1 is calling up API. Uh, I can uh, do a quick show of uh, what I've actually done. But also to answer your question, one of the things that, that have been a bit difficult for us is the membership providers because they are not the same. So we have to write login facades, especially like for Kulturnet, we had a login facade that would lock you in both to C1 and to uh, not commerce. That's why, that's why so when you log into the C1 console, you're automatically logged into... Yes, because we, uh, yeah, we sort of... You aren't right now, but you will be. Yeah. Uh, in the 2.0, they introduced something called external uh, authentication providers. Mm -hmm. And I'm planning on writing a composite external authentication provider. But it's also, Marcus, the, the, the login aspect has two challenges to it. One thing is the, the simple seed admin login. We can handle that. The, the, the other problem is when people start writing their own authentication logic for the front end users. Like for Kulturnet, and we have a we have custom authentication logic that looks to a data type that has a password and so on. And doing those things, we, we had to come up with somewhat a cohesive way of doing that. And I mean, I'm I'm very old school ASP.NET, so I'm you know I principal and all that stuff all the way and is in role and, and so on. But I think essentially we'll end up trying to write a single membership provider that can handle everything. Uh, but it's hard for us to tell because we see a lot of chains, especially in not commerce. Like they, 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 then they change their event model, then they change their, you know, architecture and so on. And on a personal note, I think it has a lot to do with their own business model because the, the guys who make not commerce, uh, and obviously they should make money off that because they make a great, great product, they sell a lot of documentation. So with every new version, there's new documentation. And if you change your API all the time, then most developers will have to buy a $20 PDF copy of a book, and that will probably make you quite a lot of money somewhere. Also, they make, uh, then they do a lot of changes in the core team. I spoke, I spoke to a Danish guy who's now on the not from his core team. It sounded like it's been a. Uh, yeah, I think they have. New people taking over. I think uh, when they changed it to 2.0, they actually did it from scratch. Yeah. And uh, they're still migrating some of the yeah, earlier code, but they're taking it from scratch every time. Yeah. Hmm. But how robust is this then to future release of the new? I mean, uh, do you have any idea? Of no, it's 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 it's, a, it's an excellent it's an excellent question, Sam. Uh, the, the the thing I was talking also with uh, Oscar about it earlier is that we might get into a situation where we just have to put some version locks and not and say, okay, uh, for this version of the package, you can use this version of not. There's no way two ways around it because we can't guarantee. Uh, backwards compatibility in not commerce since it's not our solution. Uh, thus, we just have to sort of draw a line in the sand and say, you know, anything beyond this is, is on your own risk. It might work. I mean, some of the components stay the same, but 
again, some of them might not, and then it might break down. But we will obviously, uh, pending on the interest and so on, try to maintain uh, stable releases of the package that will match the major releases. We'll have to look at the feature sets from the also and say, do we really need this in order to, to put, I mean, we've invested maybe, I don't know, 400 man hours or something like that over the last six months trying to get to the stage where we are now and we're talking multiple refactorings where we've had to change code because other people changed code and so on. And it's, you know, we all have to, 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 to live and, 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 and make some money. So when you do this and trying to, to make it done on a free basis because that's what it is right now, it's also a hobby thing for us. We have to also just put it aside sometimes and say we have to go do other stuff and then what's there is there. But right now we're fairly uh, happy with what we've got. And I think if, if, uh, when and if we extend it with, you know, we probably need somewhere between 10 and 15 different f feature or functions available to begin with to have sort of the granularity that we need but when we have that in place like i said earlier hopefully in like three months time we will aim to make a stable release that will work with whatever version of knob is is in probably like two three or two four depending on what uh, we end up with uh, but with some stable version of knob and that'll be that and then if we see a lot of interest and a lot of traction and so on, then we can start, you know, pouring more resources into actually extending it. And I mean, we might even go as far as just putting it into the community. We haven't really decided on that yet because right now we're more into just saying, well, we can maintain what we have ourselves and that's fine and it works for our needs. And then if we can offer it to others as a package, that's just great. Create the functions as uh, you do with the sharp functions in the uh, CF, uh, and then I emulate uh, in C form. So I just give some root data, and I have an so the HTML output is just your so it's not from much more. Uh, actually, this code would explain I think. Oh my god! I'm just going to migrate it. I guess. Uh, I'm. I have my own context, so it it thinks it has a request, even though it does, doesn't. Uh, just like the way you did the version functions, uh, I guess, or something similar. And then I just render it out. Uh, the what? No, no, I'm just saw a lot of big context and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so templating and all that is still in not mm. Yeah, template on how the product should look like. Yeah, it would be. But I think also probably the general idea is that we would we would want to keep as much of the templating as possible inside Composite because that's where I think the webmasters and such are comfortable at working. I mean, if you look at the the themes and such in the older versions of Knob you would need to know your way around a web config file at least to figure out how to alter that. And that's not something that, you know, Jane or John Doe webmaster knows when they're sitting in front of their computer. So they'll go and call a technician for $100 an hour and then get him to do it. And we don't, you know, the technology these days is, is so complex and we can do so many things with apps and, and you know, looking at from a code perspective, Roslyn coming out now, we can start, you know, generating code on the fly and all that. Why should we have this whole legacy structure where our client can't, you know, go and edit these items because we deem it to be too complex? There must be a way for us to break that down, and that's what we're trying to do. Any other questions? Cool. Then uh, we'll wrap this up, and um, we'll put some... Uh, some comments up somewhere in the community when we get further with the package and um, hopefully uh, we will uh, see a lot of adaptation from the community in using this package because I think that from from any perspective it, it makes all of our lives easier if we can provide you know 
a lot of functionality inside the CMS system for our clients because that's really what we're selling if we're pitching against other development companies or other developers. We, we pick a tool, they pick a tool, we compare budgets and so on, and whoever has the most value for money often wins the client. And this is what we're trying to do now, say, okay, we think you know, a great value earner would be having this whole eShop thing more naturalized inside Composite compared to uh, the other CMS systems right now who doesn't really do that. I've understood that even Umbraco has their challenges with this. So, I mean, it's uh, or with an commerce maybe, but it, it, it doesn't matter. The point is just we want to try and make it convenient to use Composite. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a super important feature. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really nice to see that, that it's Pretty much working. Yeah, it's pretty much working, yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you considered, that? Would, would, you, would you provide this on a commercial basis or parts of it? Or, uh... That's not something we've decided yet, but I think we will, we will probably, maybe we'll make, you know, a commercial version and a, a free version. So we have like a, a free version which just does the bare bones and then we have a commercial version that has maybe, you know, advanced controls that took us a lot of time to implement and so on. Uh, that's you know uh, still to be decided. If you do a free version, uh, you, you could consider hooking up with uh, the country projects, uh, basically because I, I I would bet that a lot of people would uh, would be interested in uh, in uh, helping out with this. Uh, yeah. And now commerce is like it's, I guess it's the number one e-commerce. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it is. And um, and so so it's an obvious. Half from many people's mm. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Thanks.